Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I review comics, talk about where I've got them, and uh, the Kickstarters you should back, all sorts of stuff like that. So let's begin. Um, I'm going to start with. Oops. Let's see. It eats what feeds it. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, it eats what feeds it. it. This is an ash can that uh, I ordered some comics from Scout Comics and they sent me this one in the bundle for free. I don't think I ordered it. Maybe I did. I better check my receipts. It's possible. Um, but they're really cool about it. It has a really cool art style to it. Let me show you some of that. It's on This is only four pages long. And man, did it hook me. Uh, so if they can hook me in four pages, then I'm going to have to check this one out. So this is what it looks like right here. Um, it's got a really cool watercolor grainy look to it. Really thin line art. Just gets the job done. Looks really stellar. And uh, yeah. So I, I'm interested in seeing what uh, this Eat What Feeds It story has to offer. And I'll probably wait for the trade because this seems like the book that would... Uh, it would be... I don't know, I like reading the trades and I think this a trade would fit this book a lot better. So uh, it eats what feeds it. This is an ash can, um, but I am going to look into getting the trade when it's available. So I'll keep my eyes on Scout Comics for when they uh, advertise and uh, start sharing that that's going to be happening. Um, yeah, let me see. Here's my notes on it. So yeah, this was just a four page teaser on uh, It Eats What Feeds It. And the art is grainy and the fogginess gives it a really mystical kind of uh, what's going on horror film kind of aspect to it. Like, uh, yeah. And the line art was uses really thin lines. I re that's what I liked about it. It's kind of uh, kind of gave me a vibe like um, like a style illustrator, not a not style, a uh, designer, a uh, clothing designer. And uh, it just kind of conveyed a sophistication to it that is kind of neat in uh, comic books because you don't really see that kind of art style in comic books, really. Uh, you see the superhero style. I'm kind of guilty of that myself. I uh, just kind of, whatever. Um, so, yeah. It eats what feeds it. I'm going to be checking that out. Next up on my list is Oblivion 1. Oblivion 1 is one I got in that uh, Scout Comics bundle that I just ordered. Um, I went through their catalogs and just picked and chosen uh, some things that interested me. So Oblivion 1 is one I checked out. Oblivion 1, let's see here, show you some artwork without showing you something really uh let's see here oblivion one is written by ken christensen art by francesco gaston colored by jen hickman and it is lettered by ali schwed so there's this boy in juvie that's how it starts out and uh his name is drew he gets in some trouble uh, i'm not really a big fan of drew right now because he He's a bad kid, and obviously he's in juvie, I don't know what for, can't remember right now. Um, so I will go on, jump into uh, Maxine. Maxine is Drew's brother, and she is going, she's going to her boyfriend's house to surprise him. It is, uh, it is her birthday, and she's decided that he's the one that she's going to be with for her first time. And so, on the way there... She accidentally runs over a person on the side of the street, but then that person disappears in a flamboyant purple strange light, and uh, she didn't see it happening because she was dialing 911 when it happened. And so she's like, Mister, where'd you go? And uh, anyway, so she runs to a gas station because something's wrong with 911, no one's answering there. and. Uh, she runs to a gas station for help, and there are two boys uh, stealing beer and money from the till. And uh, they threaten her, but then he says, I don't know where the guy went, and he's about to explain that 
he disappeared and anyway uh, one of the kids that was in the store gets hurt and so they're they run him to the uh, police station where she finds out there that uh, all the adults have been disappearing and that's what this basically is this is a story about all the adults disappearing and this is our uh, first look into that world how it happens and where it goes from there is very interesting so I'm going to be checking out Oblivion I like how it says Oblivion with an 18 in it because I'm assuming anybody under 18 is still around and everybody over 18 are the ones that disappeared that's my guess of how the story is going and I am interested in checking out issue 2 when I uh, do my next order for Scout Comics I'm going to be checking that out so check out Oblivion by Scout Comics really good stuff here's their uh, scoutcomics.com ad on the back really cool stuff Oblivion 1 okay let's see what else have I got here alright and now I'm on to Canopus number one. This is Canopus number one. Uh, if you're on social media, you might have seen some buzz about this one. It's a different comic book, that's for sure. Canopus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Canopus? Canopus? I don't know. So Canopus is the name of a planet. And uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot the credits here. So let's start with, uh, this is written, drawn, colored, and lettered by Dave Crichon, and flats by Dustin Pennett, and this is about an astronaut, let's see, by the, can't remember your name now, where's my notes at? So this is about an astronaut, and she, uh, she just wakes up, she's in her suit, she's on a different planet, and she doesn't know where she is, and she finds out her suit can talk to her. It's a in-suit navigation system, and it goes by in nav for short, and it tells her that she is on a star. She is orbiting a star on a, pl a planet called Canopus, 309.8 light years from Earth. So she's very far away from Earth, and uh, and she doesn't know how she got there. She doesn't know how to get back. She doesn't know what's going on. And there is a child-sized robot next to her that keeps calling her mom. And uh, so while they start trekking the planet because they're trying to find this ore that they can use, uh, put into, they need this mineral to put into a 3D printer so that they can print the uh, engine parts to get it off the planet. And uh, so while they're trekking, they this uh, robot that keeps calling her mom he falls into a hole and the hole's full of toys really weirdness going on and you, you get the impression that these are all toys that uh, this astronaut girl um, this astronaut woman had when she was a little girl and uh, the toys form into a giant monster and it attacks her but she destroys it then they're going through a canyon, and these canyon, this canyon has holes in it, like, kind of looks like, um, kind of like a city, like these, this canyon here has uh, holes in it that look like windows and buildings, and it's confusing. She's like, wait, there, there's never been any people on this planet, but then this weird tooth monster thing starts chasing her, and then she goes into another flashback mode. The flashbacks are kind of cool. They're uh, they're done in a, a weird panel system where there is just really uh, mosaic kind of um, oh, how do I, I don't know. It's just it, it's a different different way of storytelling and it's very dreamlike and kind of trippy in a way. So yeah, and uh, then you then she it ends on a cliffhanger. There's an astronaut in a hole, which her dad was an astronaut, so I think that's why she became an astronaut. Really cool stuff. Um, so Canopus 1, check that one out. It's on Scout Comics as well. Scout Comics, Canopus, that's how they do their back ads. I like it. It's an interesting way to do it. And uh, 
yeah, Scout Comics is making some good stuff. Uh, go on their library and check them out. Uh, there's a couple things on Scout Comics that I'm a fan of. Um, and it looks like I keep growing on that uh, things I'm a fan of list because now it eats what feeds it and Oblivion are going to be making my list. Um, White Ash is on my list and Tart and let's see there's one more. Oh, Snow White Zombie Apocalypse is in that is a scout comic that I, I'm into so yeah I'm gonna have to check out some more stuff on scout see what's going on in there that's Canopus a uh, lot of pink tones in that cool looking stuff and what else have I read this week oh I've also read uh, Swing I read Swing on my uh, phone though so Swing let's see where'd my notes for Swing go I don't know I lost it so I will just read the credits page here. Swing is created by Linda Sedgick, Matt Hawkins, and Jenny Chong. And it's written by Matt Hawkins and Jenny Chong. And art and letters by Linda Sedgick, which uh, Linda Sedgick uh, does Bloodstain, which I have in my uh, read pile, so I will be reading that soon. Um, I've already read it digitally, but I wanted the physical copies because it is so good and uh, Swing, let's see here Swing is about uh, a couple and they meet in the cutest way, they meet in college and uh, they start dating in college and then uh, when her mom finds out then they decide well she knows now so we don't need to keep hiding it and they date even more and sooner or later all this dating leads to uh, a pregnancy and they end up getting married and they're a cute couple you root for them all the time but as things go along um, like see check that artwork out it's freaking awesome um, as things go along uh, they decide you start seeing they have troubles in their marriage um, he's he's playing video games with other characters from the uh, the Sunstone universe I think is what they're calling it because Sunstone is uh, from her husband, the artist's husband, and uh, so and yeah, I think they're even playing games with the uh, Bloodstone characters and the Sunstone characters, and so he's playing, and his character freezes while he's distracted by his wife, and uh, she's trying to get him to come up to the bedroom, and he's like, you know, it's game night. What the heck's going on here? And so she's all mad, and he, his character dies, and he goes up. To see what's going on and talks to her through the door well then later uh, he's sleeping on the couch because he feels like he messed up and uh, the daughter comes out and he's he's really cute with her and the wife is watching well when the daughter comes and wakes him up and he, she's like why are, why are you sleeping on the couch dad and he's like oh no reason I just couldn't sleep so I came down to the couch to sleep instead of uh, throwing the wife under the bus or anything he just he just makes it off like it's his fault or something and anyway so yeah the story goes on and I guess she gets the idea that uh, to spice up their love life they're gonna look into swinging and that's what the whole comic is they go to a club where swinging is taking place and uh, they're checking it out it's a pretty interesting comic it's very sexy not safe for kids so uh, watch out for that there's adult language adult scenarios and nudity and sex scenes and all that stuff but it is a very good story at heart uh, you really start feeling for these characters they did a really excellent job setting it up so yeah I found this comic uh, digitally on social media they were sharing the links to it so I thought I'd check it out because I like the artist and uh, it's good stuff. Um, if you get a chance, check out Swing. It's from Image Comics. And let's see. That bring that wraps up what I've read. Now we get on to uh, the mailbox section of my comics. Um, this is more than just mailbox, though. I think this is all what I've picked up at the comic shop. So here's some more Scout comics. Um, I just picked up White Ash, numbers 5 and 6. So I have 1 through four in my read pile already and these are going to be going into my read pile pretty soon. White Ash. 
Um, I think I've already read these from the Kickstarter versions, but these are the new new covers and new uh, everything from White from Scout Comics. And so I'll check those out again. It, I mean, it's a good story. I could reread it a hundred times, and I don't think I'll get bored of it. So check out White Ash Scout Comics. Ask your local comic shop to get them. That's where this whole. Uh, Pile came from my local comic shop, Gamers Asylum. Here's my Spider-Man, drawn by Ryan Otley. So I'm a fan of Ryan Otley, Nick Spencer also, and uh, oh yeah, Cliff Rathborn is in on this one too. So yeah, if you're a fan of Invincible, you probably already know about this because those are the art team on that. And I picked up Tart. This is another Scout comic. And Tart's one I've been seeing on Kickstarter forever, and it was so far in, like eight issues or so in, by the time I discovered it. Maybe less than that, I don't know. But, the trade came out. I bought the first issue from uh, my comic shop, but then I'm like, then I saw them advertise a trade, and I love trades, so I went, I canceled my run of the single issues and said, hey, give me the trade. Look at that cover. I mean, that is an amazing cover. It jumps out at you. It says, hey, check this out, read this, it's on target. So, yeah, it's awesome artwork, awesome storyline, uh, time travel, all that fun stuff. You don't know what's going on in Tart. So I'm reading that soon, going in my read pile. Oh, yeah, and I picked up some backing boards. Backing boards are always fun, right? And that's the end of my read pile. Now, what is on Kickstarter? Kickstarter is my favorite place to find comics right now. Um, so, I'm going, first off, I'm going to start with one that is ending in hours. So if you're watching this uh, a couple days from now, sorry, you missed it. But, if you're watching this the day I post it, just pause it and go to Kickstarter right now and check out Aster of Pan. Aster of Pan is it's an, an, an apocalypse, a post-apocalypse storyline where uh, the Earth has continued on and uh, the people have evolved into a different kind of uh, living style than what we are living in right now. So who knows, maybe this is actually going to happen? I don't know. Aster of Pan is about a girl named Aster and it's a kind of a Hunger Games meets Dodgeball uh, story is what they're taglining it on Kickstarter. So in this world, uh, I guess she's playing dodgeball to uh, feed herself. That's how they get their food, is they play well enough, they get food. And so they ask this girl, who kind of lives on the outskirts of town, to come play dodgeball for them. The artwork is amazing looking. Um, I, I think it's uh, drawn in French, or from a French artist, so... Um, it is definitely a different art style than what I am used to, but I like it. Uh, this girl has a little foxtail kind of thing going on, too. So, yep, yeah, that has hours to go on it. There are so many uh, stretch goals and rewards that you're going to get if you back it. And uh, I, obviously, I'm a pin lover. You know me from my own Kickstarter and that. Uh, and so one of the rewards that they are shooting for now is for a pin. The pin looks awesome. And so if I get this pin and the story is amazing, I am going to be happier than, I don't know, what, it, things that are happy. <laughs> anyway, I am going to have a pin and a comic that I like if it's awesome, so we'll see where that goes. I like Hunger Games. I liked it when it came out in book form and then again when it came out in movie form. So this is kind of cool to have a Hunger Games kind of dodgeball. I, I hope, I don't know if it's just if he's relating it to dodgeball because it's funny or because it has dodgeball in it or some kind of th thing like that but hours left on Aster of Pan on Kickstarter go check it out get all the rewards the prints all that fun stuff um yeah uh, last I checked I think it had 30 hours left I'm not sure but that's still hours so you better get on that today right now pause the show Go check it out and then come back to the show and find out what the rest of my Kickstarters are because here are some good comics on Kickstarter. Woodland Creatures number two. Uh, I have read and done a review for Woodland Creatures one. 
and I loved it. Uh, I am a romance novel fan myself. I read uh, Maggie Shane and Gina Showalter and Marjorie Liu uh, romance novels. They are all amazing stuff, and uh, Woodland Creatures falls into that for me. Um, it is a romance comic book about a species of people that can avatar send their consciousness into wolves and uh, they're so it's like a werewolf story story and uh, but with a twist like it's not it's not the sta same thing we're always used to with werewolves where they turn into werewolves they just go into the body of a wolf and control them. but it's a uh, it's drawn in line art no shading or coloring but I'm trying to talk her into uh, maybe doing a colored version I'll buy that too who knows, maybe someday they'll get picked up by a publishing company and the co that company will want it colored. It's already ready to be colored. All it has to do is just get republished. And uh, Woodland Creatures comes out in English and you can get Spanish versions of the book. So if you are Sp Spanish oriented, uh, you can get the book. If it was a kid friendly book, I would get it for my kids because uh, they are in school for Spanish dual immersion classes and that but either way if you speak Spanish you can get a Spanish book if you speak English you, you could probably get both um, so check out Woodland Creatures 2 it ends on September 24th so you have a week to get in on that I think um, and well let's see what's on my list here Starlight number two that ends on the 24th of September uh, Starlight number two uh, I just did a review for Starlight 1 in, I think, my last episode, and I loved it. It was amazing. It was fun. It, it had a quirky art style that was made me think of uh, Spider-Gwen, but with aliens and kids with superpowers and all that fun stuff. And Travis Webb gave me a shout-out on his uh, Kickstarter updates, so that was really cool. He shared my review on there, and uh, yeah. It's pretty cool, so that's awesome. I can't wait to get to issue two. I think I'm getting it with a uh, with stickers. I'm not sure. I uh, I don't have it right in front of me right now, but that's how I am. I I usually go for things that have the comic, the stickers, and the pins. Um, I'll have to look into that, make sure I'm up to date on all that stuff. Anyway, Starlight Two. It's a story about some kids that. They were super power, superheroes in the limelight when they were kids. Now they're teenagers and they kind of hide from the limelight. And uh, a YouTuber that uh, uncovered the truth and he was going to go and interview them. But as he was knocking on their door, aliens showed up, kidnapped their mom. And so, issue two, we're going to check out what happens after that. They're in space trying to find their mom. I can't wait for that. And she... She I did an, a review of in the last episode also. Uh, it is on Indiegogo right now. So check out She. It is hardback. It is bigger than a regular comic. It looks beautiful. It was an awesome read. Uh, bounty Hunter in Space Alien, I think. And uh, it was a good read. Check it out. Awesome cover too with the die cut hole in it. Really cool stuff. One I just recently backed. It is called Shotgun Full of Roses. It is about a uh, Cupid that uses a shotgun, and these two uh, kids, two people, they end up stealing that shotgun from Cupid. And they're going around, and they're robbing banks, and they're shooting people with uh, this Cupid shotgun. And basically, I think what happens is whoever gets shot with it, like the arrows from Cupid's bow, the people get shot with it, they fall in love. And so... That's a weird way to rob a bank, I guess, but we'll see how that storyline goes. The artwork looks really gritty and grainy. I'm kind of a sucker for that kind of artwork. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the smooth, stellar, like, uh, clean-lined artwork of Jim Lee and Scott, J. Scott Campbell, but I also like my artwork messy and kind of out there and gritty and splotchy. So check out Shotgun Full of Roses. It ends on October 7th. It's on Kickstarter right now. And uh, what else is going on? Jason Brubaker's... Oh, that was my hands, just in case you're wondering. I get nervous and do that. Um, Jason Brubaker's Phobos is on Indiegogo right now. I 
I have a copy of Phobos that I got from Patreon. I loved it, so I can't wait to see how this one looks. This one's going to be hardback. All the uh, grammar grammarical errors of the first issue are going to be fixed in this one. That's kind of his system. He releases it. People give him feedback and he fixes them. So it's on Indiegogo right now. Phobos by Jason Brubaker. He's done Sithra and uh, Remind. A bunch of stuff I'm a big fan of. Oh, and he did some animation work on uh, the Kung Fu Pandas. Those scenes where uh, Kung Fu Panda has a dream or a flashback. Jason Brubaker Bruback- had a, a big hand in those. So check that stuff out. His artwork on uh, Sithra is amazing and uh, good stuff. So, hey Jack, uh, tomorrow. So Jason Brubaker's Phobos on Indiegogo, and that's the end of my uh, Kickstarter news. And so, if you have anything on Kickstarter or Indiegogo right now. Hit me up in the comments. Find me on social medias under Rentnarb Studios, Rentnarb Studios Comics, Gary Brantner. Um, hit me up and say, hey, man, uh, I know you like Kickstarter comics, indie comics like that, and uh, I want you to check out my Kickstarter. I want you to give me a shout out on your show. You, te- you, you give me a comment or a shout out like that, and uh, I'll say, yeah, I'll check it out. And uh, because the more I know about these things, the less I'm going to miss something that I might like. So, yeah, let me know about your Kickstarter Indiegogo campaigns. Let me know about your uh, webtoons or whatever comics you want me to know about that you're making. Let me know about them, and that's the best way I can come across them. I, I don't have a big production here. I'm kind of a poor guy making my own comics. So I'll do what I can. And, uh... I, I am going broke buying all these comics. It's awesome. I love it. I mean, I could be one of those guys that goes out and spends all his money on rifles and hunting and campers and all that stuff, but that's not me. I'm a comics guy. I'd rather be going to a convention, going through the artist alley tables and finding somebody new. But, uh, yeah, as you know, Comic Cons are kind of not going on right now, which is really sad because this is the week us here in Utah have our Comic Con and it's cancelled. My daughter's a little sad about that because it would have actually fallen on her birthday and uh, she would have had all this birthday money to spend at Comic Con so she's kinda sad that they're not going on. I'm sad they're not going on because I'm not talking with you guys, my fans of my comics and finding new comics in the Artist Alley but whatever. If we uh, get through this, wear our masks in public, all that stuff, be safe keep things clean um, we'll be back out there doing kickstarters or doing comic cons again and uh, we'll see where it goes uh, alright that's the end of my show thank you for uh, watching and check out these comics that I've mentioned today they are some uh, they're all things every one of them are things I've enjoyed and obviously if I read something and I don't enjoy it I will still do a review and let you know um, because, I don't know, that's just how it is. And I'm not going to be really mean about it if I don't like it, because uh, that's just not how I am. But I will give you pointers if you made the comic, and I'll say, hey, uh, this is things you can do to improve it. I've done that before, actually. So, <clears throat> and that's how I am with my own comic. I mean, if I if you read my comic and you're looking at it and you're like, I don't know, what you would, but if you tell me something like your colors seem off or whatever, I'm going to take that to heart and improve my next issue. That's how this goes. No hard feelings about that. I'll look. Anyway, that's a long ending. I went off when I said I was saying goodbye, and then I kept talking, but I guess that's where 